Our story begins on a small strip of sand by the Atlantic Ocean, Absecon Island, or as we know it now, Atlantic City. Back then, it was merely a seashore village visited by some of the more daring summer vacationers who would ride a train shoreward over a narrow gauge railroad. What brought people here was the sun, the sand, and the surf. Atlantic City was marketed as a seaside attraction, and many considered its pure sea air and sunshine as a common cure-all. Quickly, Atlantic City became America's favorite seaside resort and playground. In 1870, the railroad company and hotels conspired to build a boardwalk along the beach. Both had grown tired of tourists tracking sand into the trains in the hotel lobbies. And on June 16, 1870, Atlantic City's first boardwalk opened. It was one mile long, 10 feet wide, and just a few feet above the sand. One of its early retailers was a candy merchant who ran a small taffy stand along the boardwalk. Legend has it that one night a full moon caused a lively surf that sprayed white sea foam all over the merchant's taffy. The next morning, to his dismay, he arrived to find his candy stock soaked. Still, he opened the stand that day. His first customer was a young girl who asked for some taffy. You mean salt water taffy, he responded somewhat sarcastically. She bought the taffy and returned to her mother on the beach, chewing delightedly. And just like that, saltwater taffy was born. And it wasn't long until the accidental taffy became a household name. Although saltwater taffy may have been created accidentally, there's a traditional process that the James Candy Company proudly continues today. The first step in making saltwater taffy is cooking. We take sugar and corn syrup and throw a few secret ingredients into a copper kettle and start cooking. Once it's reached the right temperature, we pump the batch over into the vacuum chamber that cooks the taffy quickly and flashes off the rest of the moisture to create a dry, tender piece of candy. The next step is cooling the taffy and then pulling it once it's reached the right temperature. Pulling the taffy helps keep it smooth and aerates it. This is also when we add any special flavors or colors to accentuate the taste of the taffy. Once we're done pulling the taffy, we run it through a machine that cuts and wraps it. Our machines can cut and wrap 750 pieces of taffy a minute. Enoch James was one of the first to catch on to the saltwater taffy craze. Rumor has it that Enoch James a confectioner and equipment salesman by trade, began creating saltwater taffy years before he introduced it on the boardwalk in the late 1880s. His recipe captivated customers, but it was different than most. It was smooth and wholesome. James also removed the stickiness that made taffy and its wrapper inseparable, not to mention pulling one's teeth out. Quickly, James Taffy became synonymous with purity, quality, and honest manufacturing. It wasn't just taffy he revolutionized, but the whole process. He also found new machines that automatically pulled, wrapped, and packaged the taffy, and found new customers by introducing new confections like chocolate-covered saltwater taffy, coconut macaroons, and boardwalk fudge, all of which he would package and send to customers all across the country. James wasn't alone in capitalizing on the saltwater taffy craze. He had competition, namely Joseph Fralinger. In fact, many would say it was Joseph Fralinger who made saltwater taffy famous. A former glass blower and fish merchant, Joseph Fralinger came to Atlantic City in the late 1880s. He was called the king of saltwater taffy, but it took him some time to earn that title. Around 1884, after managing baseball teams and working as a bricklayer, Joseph Fralinger found himself running a concession along the boardwalk. He sold fresh fruit, mineral water, and lemonade, attracting customers by juggling lemons outside his stand. In 1885, he took over as owner of a taffy stand, having spent the winter perfecting his own recipe for the confection. Fralinger made molasses taffy first, followed by traditional favorites like chocolate and vanilla. Eventually, his offering grew to 25 flavors, which was Atlantic City's largest selection at the time. Fralinger helped make taffy famous by creating Atlantic City's first souvenir. Thinking back to his fish merchant days, he ordered hundreds of one-pound oyster boxes and packed them full of saltwater taffy. He started selling them on Saturday morning 
and by Sunday at noon, he was sold out. Over time, Fralinger expanded, introducing almond macaroons, peanut butter chews, filled center saltwater taffy, creamy mint sticks, and much, much more. Many of these nostalgic convections were based on Fralinger's own family recipes. The original recipes and authentic ingredients continue to this day. Many who'd make their way to Atlantic City in the summer couldn't help but stop by one of the Baird's chocolate houses on their way back from the beach. Baird's chocolates began in 1939 as the hobby of James Baird Kelly. He'd make each batch from scratch, taking pride in every piece by using only the finest, purest natural ingredients, including real cream and butter. He started selling his homemade confections out of a small home and storefront. His son joined the business, and in a few years, there were four locations spread across the Garden State. After all these years, each batch is still made entirely from scratch, and the Baird's tradition of letting customers handpick their favorites continues. Owned and operated by the Glazer family, fifth generation confectioners themselves, the James Candy Company embraces the timeless tradition of James Deluxe Confections, Fralinger's Saltwater Taffy, and Baird's Chocolates, all of which are available here. James and Fralinger's both started in the 1880s. Both were intense competitors for years till about the 1990s, when luckily I became the owner of both companies. I've kept them separate, I've kept the products separate, there are different ingredients in both, and we've kept the packaging completely separate. James, Fralingers, and Bairds have been part of our family for years. I have so many wonderful childhood memories. I grew up coming to work with my father on the weekends, helping in the store, getting elevator rides with my grandfather, the same elevator we still use today. Um, it's very special to be part of a family business and to be carrying on those traditions and then sharing new memories with my children. This is, after all, a family business. Our goal is to share the happiness that we have in making candy with our customers. Whether it's a first visit for somebody or they're reliving an old memory, the way we see it, memories create stories for the future. They're really moments that we don't forget. We cherish the experiences our customers and employees have with us. I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than bringing smiles to the faces of everyone we meet while carrying on the tradition of James, Fralingers, and Bears. Today, the Glazers are pioneering new products, blending the past and the present to revitalize their stores and ensuring that these classic brands will forever stand the tastes of time.